Hey guys, welcome to uh, Season 5, Episode 6 of the MKAU Show. Today we have Subby. Hello. We have Mr. Vibe back. Good day. It's been a while. Yep. It's good to see him back. Uh, reoccurring, two in a row, we've got Mr. Techno. Good day, good day. And we have Typical Camby, first time on our podcast. How we doing? One review deep. He's a total greenhorn to the MKU show. So <laughs> because be nice. it's a newbie, he has to introduce himself. Yeah, go for it. Uh, so my <laughs> name's Typical Camby, not my real name, obviously. Um, I've been streaming for a wee while now and just getting into the the reviewing side because I quite enjoy it. Pretty down to earth guy. Yeah, what's the games you like living, to play? Uh a bit of everything. I I enjoy a lot of genres. Yeah, we're all a bit a, a lot of all stars here. We're all a bit of variety mm. people. Mm. Mm. Um, just featuring Anya's butt. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what have we been up to? What have we been playing, listening to, or watching lately? Anyone? Kirby. You can Kirby can go first. Um. I've been doing a lot of horror games lately. I've been on that yeah, grind boy. trying to trying to find the best ones. And oh, what else have I been playing? Playing some Rocket League. And I've just got a, a new Xbox, so I'm able to play Siege with the fam now, which is yep. pretty sweet. We talk about Siege a lot on this podcast. <laughs> um, you've been playing Tiny Tina's. What do you think of that? Oh yes, that's right. It's an amazing game. The it's it's not like like it's it's got amazing detail but in that style and it just brings it to a whole new level it's amazing yeah unfortunately it went a little bit under the radar i've uh, heard very well, mixed I things think, about it yeah like everyone loves the original borderland series but when tiny tina came out it kind of went up in height but then like died off real quick did it have yeah, the same pretty- charm as uh tiny tina's uh, DLC in Borderlands 2? I didn't play yeah, it. it, it oh, okay. Did, yeah. Yeah? Got some of it, yeah. But I think that's probably what they were trying to capitalize on. Hmm. Actually, Techno, you got some exciting, like, life stuff you could talk about. Yeah. Well, I just I just got geared up with a job interview today about a, at a new new game dev company, so that sounds pretty cool. I can't say too much just yet. Yeah. Uh, I've been... Just finishing my uni stuff and then rendering lately. like pictures and stuff, right? Then you post stuff on Twitter. Yes. Yeah. That was a that picture was... of a skull. Was it a picture of a skull? Oh no, that was <laughs> that was just a meme oh, I made. It was pretty. Oh, bad. Okay. Well, yeah. Was it yours though? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. It's got to say, it was pretty shit. <laughs> I wouldn't make that. No. Um. Well, lately I've just been playing. I've been playing a lot of Overwatch again. Overwatch has been been pretty fun. Yeah. Overwatch um, two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because one's um, gone, right? Yes. Is that what happened? There's only two now. The the whole justification for two was supposed to be the PvE mode, but we won't get into that. That's for a, for a later date. For a different podcast. Um, yeah. <laughs> Promising things that don't get delivered. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, lately I've just been... Oh, I've been playing through the Dark Souls series because I always, I always started them and never finished them. So I decided this time I'm finally going through, finally finishing them. And they are one hell of a ride. And you're uploading them to YouTube, right? You want to do a little, yes, little personal Yes, I've got all the mods saved. I'm gonna gonna upload them to the YouTube. So if you want to see them, uh, you know, techno on YouTube, you'll see it there. I'll try and remember to put a link in the bio oh, in the you. description. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been the up to Pretty much released at once. Sorry. I mean, uh, recently smashed out a uh, Remnant Two. Did a did a full playthrough of that. Freaking love the first game. Didn't really know the second one was coming until earlier this year. I was so surprised. Fair Is enough, it better? Freaking, oh, much better. They improved on it and just kept all the core they kick mechanics. Ass on it. Oh yeah, freaking managed to do one playthrough, but I haven't got around to doing like multiple to do all the other boss fights because each playthrough is practically different. Now, other than that, did a couple of reviews recently. Um, did uh, Ratchet and Clank. Got the chance to review that on PC. 
Yeah. Heard a few bad things about it. I'm not sure if it's just the PlayStation fans not liking the fact that they're on PC, but they're just full on bad mouthing it, saying it doesn't run very good. The only issues I had was when it was going through the rifts. That's when it like started a little bit. Other than that, the game is completely playable on PC. Yeah. Are you playing it on an SSD? Yeah, on an SSD. Yeah. Naturally. If I'm playing like a, a major game that I really got to sink some time into, it's going to be on an SSD just so I can yeah. make it load faster and whatnot. Other than that, it's been yeah. smashing at the streams, you know, playing good old Siege and yeah, a bit of Rocket <laughs> League myself. Mm-hmm. Getting, I think I'm getting quite good at that. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Well, you heard it here first, guys. Ratchet and Clank is good on PC. Yep. <laughs> what have you been up to, Sub? Um, playing Siege. Yeah. <laughs> is that it? <laughs> Why? Okay. No, no, Why no, no. have you been playing Siege? I don't know. It's a good game. No, we played a bit of Payday 3 as well. Me, Vibe, and oh, yeah, that was, that was good uh, Red, and whoever else it was. I think it was just us three. In beta, hey. Yeah, pretty yeah finished today at 6 o'clock. So it's over now. But Was it an yeah. open beta? No. Okay. It was, uh, it was open. Still for it, but it was pretty easy to get into. Was it invite? Yeah, right. Invited beta. Yeah, okay. sort of. You had to apply and you just had to hope that you got in, but it was fairly easy on the Xbox. I did get the email for it on Steam yesterday. Okay. <laughs> okay. But yeah, that finished today, so I've been playing a bit of that. And a bit, of, and a bit of Siege. Um, I, didn't, I didn't play a lot of play, Payday 2, but now I kind of want to go back and have a look. Anyone here played Payday 2? Yeah, I played, I, the, played the first two. Oh, yeah. Played, played the absolute on, crap out of it. I played it on Xbox, and it, it felt kind of jank on Xbox. Just the movement and camera control just did not feel good. I got kind of lost uh, in Payday 2 when they just kept releasing all this DLC, and I was like, I don't oh, want to yeah. buy all this. But like, oh, I, I haven't it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I've, I've, re- I've downloaded it again on the Xbox to eventually jump back and have a look. Because I did enjoy... It was only one level on Payday 3, but it was fun. There was, I was watching a stream today. It was actually Geef stream today, Stace. Oh, he was, yeah. he was playing it. And yep, they did it in... They, they got it their time down to 2 minutes 55 seconds. Wow. Wow. Uh, Unde- no undetected. Or... Undetected. Oh, nice. And they took the money out the front door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Without being detected? <laughs> yeah, yeah they, did, they didn't even put their masks on the whole time. That's oh, awesome. Wow. That's why they could walk out the front door because I found a bit of a loophole where if you're not wearing a mask, you're carrying the bags of money around, you're not detected. No one cares. <laughs> so they didn't put their masks on the whole time and just walked out of the vault out the front door with all the bags. That's yeah, what you, you really call need, cash you really, in transit. Yeah, you only really need to put one person with a mask on to clear the guards and stuff. That's about it. Mm. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. I'll have to try and find his bod. Um... I haven't really been playing it much other than what you guys have been saying, like Siege and Rocket League. But um, I have been playing a review game called Gord that's kind of like an Age of Empires managing resources and the settlement stuff. So you, I'm not going to say too much about it, but that will be coming soon in my review and just doing hardware things at the moment. And trying to finish Season 2 of From. But I'm not oh, getting there very it? quickly because so I'm good. so busy. How good is From? Oh, I, started, like one of the best shows on Steam. I did start watching Twisted Metal. Oh, yeah. Is oh, yeah, that good? That. So far, it's good. I, yeah, I like it. Yeah. I couldn't get into it at first too much. I thought, oh, this is just very gimmicky. But towards Yeah, the that's why I, really I haven't watched it. Because you were saying you, you were struggling to... At first, yeah. But towards the end, it. it got into like one of the, the scenes where there's like a bit of a royale of cars. And it's like, oh, it's great. <laughs> that's what I was All here right. to see. Let's head into our first topic. So. Um, GameSpot recently reported that Xbox are cracking down on unauthorized emulators being used on their console, but in the same breath are releasing their own. But they're uh, banning people for having these emulators on their consoles. What do we know about emulators? Do we feel like they have a place? Uh, Do you think they're kind of undercutting developers? How do we feel about emulators? I personally have never really used an emulator. I've even I think it's PC. only a problem. I think everyone does it. They just yeah. copy a game that they don't own, but it's it's fine. It's meant to be fine if long as you own the disc. Mm. So I, you I think personally... if the intent behind it, if you've already owned the game, 
yeah it's, that's it's technically anyway. that's technically where, where it's okay but if you're yeah. just it's otherwise it's piracy i guess because you don't own it you're yeah, downloading same, you're downloading something you don't own in the in the same like sort of category like what what i don't get is like companies banning emulators of games that are like 20 years old 30 yeah. years yeah. old right that, that's where i think emulation is okay like why yeah, are you trying like to they're not that making any money from it why not try and persevere the game well sorry persevere, preserve the game mm-hmm. yeah i think it's a good tool for preservation because like especially yeah. when you've got like arcade games where there's so many different like back when arcades was a thing there was like always different versions mm. some versions had certain things where they had to be taken out <clears throat> some boards that weren't even released i think um preserve these older games in different versions it's Kind of the only way to do it, isn't it? Really? Yeah. yeah. I see. It, I think it's fine for older games because, like, there's no way I'm going to go out and try and find a game that probably going to cost like a thousand dollars because some collectors like the only ones with working copies. Yeah. Just so I can play a game once. Plus, you know, <laughs> how hard is it out. to source those older consoles mm. and just go through yeah, that's like a thing. retro retailer, which probably. will mark up the price. Trying to find a working older console to play a game when it's just like it's almost impossible, and if not overly expensive for us. And then, like most of those consoles, use the you know the little, the little three like yeah the red white. Oh, look at him trying to describe something from our generation. It's called an it's called an AV or a component. An AV, yeah. There you go. You know, you can't you can barely can't use those anymore on on TVs. You have to get a AV to HDMI. Can't use them on TVs. Oh, modern TVs. It's funny you guys bring that up because the research in the article said eighty percent. 87% 87% of classic games are inaccessible or difficult to play on yeah. mod- like modern yeah, You can't consoles. play it's it. Console- mm. Yeah. Consoles. Yeah. Seems to be all these, you, know, you have all these hidden gems being unappreciated. Because Not only that, it's no like the, the companies don't make any more money off these. It's only resellers that are the ones that are making money. Yeah. So they're yeah. not at a loss when we emulate these older games. If not, they should be happy mm. that we're still enjoying these older games at whatever way we can. Oh, definitely. Like being able to, you know, download the old Pokemon games to your phone and just being able to keep it relevant. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, what do you feel about Xbox releasing their own emulators? Do you think they're going to charge people for it? Apparently it's called the X emu, but then someone else has said it's called something different. So, but they, they, yeah, they are releasing their own. Knowing the Xbox... I'd say they'd probably put on some sort of plan. Yeah, oh, the the app will be free, but they'll 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 do well, it. They'll, they'll probably to... they'll do exactly what Nintendo do with um. Yeah. You yeah. want you know here's <clears throat> here's um. What's it called? Oregon. Game Pass Ultimate. Yeah. Plus, <laughs> buy the extension or the expansion, like Nintendo, whatever <laughs> Nintendo calls it, and get all the um emulated packages. Play- yeah. PlayStation does it too. You need to have like some. Yeah, the PS stupid subscription. You have PlayStation you PS1 PlayStation games, Plus. I think it is. Yeah. I think it's like a higher tier, <coughs> not just PlayStation Plus standard. But I think, it's, I think there are only PlayStation it. games, though, aren't there? Yeah, only PS1 yeah, yeah. games. Mm. And Nintendo have got it like Sega, Nintendo. Oh, yeah. they've, they've got a bit of a mix on theirs. Yeah. And they you always like, keep adding to it, but you, you do have to get that next level of I'd subscription. Say the Xbox emulator is probably a part of Ultimate or something if they're going to do it. Perfectly into our next topic. So, uh, in other Xbox news, Game Pass Core is coming in September. Um, it's quoted as being the evolution of Xbox Live Gold, and it's going to be nine dollars ninety nine US a month. So, is this replacing Game Pass completely? Is no. it going to have the same elements? So, it's, it's what do we know about game, it? It's replacing Xbox Live Gold. So yeah. for instead of Xbox Live Gold, you'll buy Game Pass Core, which I think is only for consoles, not for PC. It's only because console. PC, you don't need a membership to play online. So that Game Pass Core comes with your online accessibility, party chat, and online games, and twenty five selected Game Pass games. So, so it's, it's essentially it's essentially, it's essentially it's gold. Benefit. It's essentially it's gold, but it's called Core, and they throw in yeah. twenty five games. Otherwise, yeah. it's the same yeah. thing. You get like a little taste of Game Pass. Pretty much, other yeah. than that, the, yeah. the other subscriptions are the same and apparently going up in price. Yes. Like about $3 for Ultimate a month. 
Um, mm. Yeah, it's about 17 US dollars now. Yeah, it's fi- well, it was 15.95 um, for ultimate a month. It's now 18.95 for ultimate for Australian. Yeah. Mm. Which I still think's fine. Whatever. Yeah. You get a lot out of it. There's a lot in there. If yeah, you play, yeah. Like at least no. play, play at least two AAA games in the Game Pass. Yeah, yeah the more and more studios play. Xbox keeps buying, eighteen dollars a month. You play the game, you've saved yourself a hundred dollars anyway. It's, it's no well, different than having well. like a Netflix subscription. Get movies. Even, yeah. <laughs> Even having like day one releases on yeah. Game Pass, oh, still yeah. pretty. That that makes it. Oh really yeah. Good. And of and it has and it has EA release. Play on it, so you get all EA yeah. games as well. Yeah, EA too. What were you saying, Bob? I was saying Payday 3 is also a day one game yeah. pass oh, game. Starfield. <laughs> yeah. It's Starfield? Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, Bethesda no game. Bethesda. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, well, we'll look at when we were watching the Xbox showcase. There was like 20 out of 27 games or something going straight to Game Pass. Oh, yeah. So it's definitely worth the money. I just don't get around to it because I'm so hung up on certain games. Oh, we're yeah. always so busy. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so next point is, uh, the revival of COD on Xbox. I know nothing about this, so if you know about it. I know this all too well. Yep, go. Uh, I, I know that since the Microsoft acquisition went through, they finally fixed the servers, but I don't know for how long, and I don't know if they will do what I think Activision will do and have the servers up for now, Modern Warfare three room and numeral three will get announced and then all of a sudden the servers will start working again. Sounds like something that Activision will probably do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Will they if they're controlled by Microsoft by then? Well, yeah, that's the thing. If Microsoft Maybe. Like I don't know when the deal actually goes through. It's just not blocked anymore. So no. I mean, mm. it hasn't gone through yet, but the the state of modern warfare two I feel like it's a good thing that the old CODs are revived. Have you anyone oh, tried to play any of the old ones? Because I, I did go back. Them. I did go and try a couple, and I, I couldn't get onto anything. Like I played uh, the OG Modern Warfare 3 with a mate of mine at his place on the on the 360, and that was that was going pretty well. Yeah, really? like, I think I had like 1,000 players online, and we found a match pretty quickly. Actually, in Unfortunately, Australia, it's going to be a little bit harder than like the US. Yeah, US. the US would have been way easier. Yeah. I've seen like Unfortunately, videos where we could only like find 10... them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it took like 10 to 20 yeah. seconds to find a match. Yeah. Unfortunately, we could only find matches on like Team Deathmatch, though. But which, sure. uh, which COD was that? Modern Warfare 3, the original. The OG. Probably Apparently, Black Ops 2 was again. booming, though. Yeah. yeah. Black Ops would be. Mm. Black Ops yeah. 1. Even before the revival, we were finding a few lobbies on Black Ops 2. Which COD would I'm... you like to see revived, though? Black Ops 2. Black yeah. Ops 2. Yeah. I prefer I'd say Black, Black Ops 2 myself. Can we? Black Ops 2, obviously. Yeah. Five's number one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Black Ops 1 was still great as well. I want to but... see uh, Advanced Warfare 2. Do you know I what? Like movement. As much... I, I liked the movement. In the I, I, yeah, I did not mind it. As honest. much heat as that cop when it first came out, I actually really enjoyed like um, no, Advanced good. Warfare 2. Is that the one with like, the mix suits in there? Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, the one with all the dashing around. Yeah. That was one of the first ones with mech suits, right? Yeah, yeah. that come out before Black Ops Three. Yeah, well, yeah. first. Sorry, it was... reminds me of that um, Matt Damon movie Elysium. Elysium, mm. whatever it was called. Yeah, yeah. it's like yeah, it's really fun gameplay. To be fair, I um, didn't mind an, an Infinite Warfare. That was fun. Oh, uh, see, yeah, I, I hated that it. one. That, that was, was one of my favorite. Much. That was the one with um. The actor from Game of Thrones, eh, Jon Snow? The yeah, story was and, probably uh, one Conor of the McGregor. best stories, but the multiplayer, <laughs> I, I absolute ass. Oh, mul- multiplayer was horrible. Multiplayer was shit. I just like the zombies. Kit Harrington. <laughs> no one liked <laughs> yeah, the zombies. Yeah. Um, so, there's been lots of, like, things going on in hardware lately. Um, PlayStation just announced that they've doubled their units sold on PlayStation 5 compared to Xbox Series X at 40 million units since release, which I think is super crazy. Um, but other than that, is there any, like, things that have 
peaked your radar in the hardware area. I have heard a rumor in the distance about a a PlayStation Slim coming potentially. Oh, PlayStation Five yeah. Pro. Yeah. Mm. Good rumors about, about that. Yeah, about I think I think PlayStation have hinted that they will do a Slim, but I think Xbox said they're not looking at doing another. Xbox has apparently another way of doing something where they're basically updating the firmware or something on the Xbox consoles to output a bit more power. But I'm not sure. And they still got cloud, cloud power, apparently. Yeah. yeah. So they could probably do like a whole, like you install a whole game, so you get most of the core of your game on there and then kind of boost it with the power of cloud to give you a bit more graphic fidelity or something. I reckon that'd be pretty cool. I can't even imagine a slim version of the Series X. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a weird gronk shape as it is. I love it, but it's I mean, yeah, like I can't imagine like this. it looking well, like, yeah. like, if we could do a 1X, I'd be so happy. That thing was dense and just had a lot of power behind it for such a small console. Yeah, they could make it a cube. <laughs> cube. Oh yeah, make it off. shorter. <laughs> yeah. Shave the top off. That'd be crazy. Is there actually like leaked uh, footage of the PlayStation 5? No, just, there's just no, there's nothing all. official at all. Yeah, yeah, it's all clickbait. That's so annoying. I would so prefer to buy a slim version of it. It's so big and chunky. I might actually invest in one to review on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, see, I've heard my own rumors that uh, Lenovo are making um, like a rival to the Steam Deck. There's not a lot of details on it. It's super um, hush hush, but it's going to incorporate AMD Phoenix processors and it's going by the title of the Legion Go at the moment. Okay. So, yeah, do we. Who did that? Made a rival to the Steam Deck. Who did? Asus. Asus. Asus did, yeah. yeah. Mm. That's, yeah what that was, that's what I was going to mention. Was the, yeah. I'm still trying to get him to send us one to look at. It looks yeah. pretty cool. I prefer that over the yeah, Steam Deck. Yeah, I would deck. 100% prefer that over the Steam Deck. Plus it's it was a little a, bit bigger, wasn't Windows, it? Steam Deck's Windows bigger. System. Oh, okay. Steam Deck's bigger and chunky. The <clears throat> uh, what's it called? The Rogue. What is it called? Uh, Rogue. Rogue. It's got, Rogue. It's got a Windows-based system, so you have Rogue Ally. freedom on it. Rogue Ally. You know that's what you it. want with it. Yeah. Other than Steam Deck being locked to pro almost primarily Steam, unless you have a few workarounds on the internet, you can look up and do. But yeah, Ally is just. This is where I think. <clears throat> this is why I think that PlayStation one is pointless. Is it actually fully portable, or it's portable, but it you can only stream to it. You can't just install a game to it and run it. So you need to have a. Connection you still need a. You still need your PlayStation Five on. But it's no different than having the backbone or whatever. It's no different than just. Console. It's no different than putting your phone in the backbone. Yeah. We think. Okay. Handheld consoles are the future because the Nintendo Switch have come out and said they're really happy with just taking third place in um, best selling. I thought they consoles. were second place. I thought Xbox no. was actually behind them. No, they're third. Oh. But yeah, so do we think handheld might be the way of the future? I feel like gamers want to have the option yeah. to choose. With how well the Steam Switch. Deck went, probably yes. Yeah. There's definitely a huge market for it. Yeah. Even the way the Switch does it is just Switch has a lot of power right. behind it considering for such a small machine. Yeah. And the fact you can just dock that thing when you get home and it just ups the fidelity and you can mm. just play it, go sit on your couch and continue to play the game you were just playing on the train. Yeah. yeah. Especially well, for the price considering most other yeah. handhelds. Hmm. The Switch was quite expensive though when it first came out. What was it? 550 yeah. bucks? Yeah. Well, it's still about 500 bucks. How much was oh no Xbox and PlayStation were what pushing a grand almost? Well, play mm. PS Five was seven fifty. They've also yeah. got the Iron Neo, which I think is like base is like twelve hundred, which is crazy. It wouldn't surprise me in the future, like you said, vibe that Xbox and PlayStation do make something where it's just a console, but you put it in a a dock or something, and it goes straight up to your TV. It would be nice to have that for Xbox. Yeah, <laughs> it was like you know this this fat dock, almost like the size of a console. Yeah, so I like don't know about play, yeah. uh, PlayStation, but <clears throat> Xbox are just leaning more towards no hardware. Yeah, soft, a lot more software based. They just wanted an app on your TV, 
which you can do with the Samsung, the new Samsungs. You just sync a controller and you just cloud stream everything. Hmm. But yeah, speaking of Nintendo as well, I've heard apparently leaks about the the new Nintendo console have come out and about. Every every Ooh. month this happens. Every, yeah. <laughs> what is it this time? Oh, it's called the Switch Two, apparently. Switch. <laughs> oh. That's not the Pro anymore. All oh, right. It would be nice if they went down the same road as Xbox and that way you do get the next Switch up and it's you can still use your old Switch games with it rather than yeah, and then buy a whole bunch of new cartridges and all that stuff. Backwards mm. compatibility. Hmm. But with higher specs, a, a Switch time. Two would be nice. But uh, yeah, I heard they were apparently looking at going up. The Switch 2 is basically just going to be more storage and scaling up the resolutions. Oh, the technology they can fit into like um, Steam Decks and the ROG yeah. Ally. It's surely Switch could do that too. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, if they're running AMD processors and stuff. So apparently there's an announcement in August, is a rumor. Oh, yeah. Which is Ooh, now. This month. Um, this month. What, Nintendo Direct? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, the rumors are it's an improved display and storage specs. They're the two main things you'd want from a new Switch, right? Yes. The resolution drives me crazy sometimes. <laughs> Anyone else got any other hardware they would like to bring up? I found no. these really cool Xbox controllers that are, they're called the Power A Advantage Wired Controller. They are wired, but I don't mind a good wired well, I'm sitting controller. at my desk all the time, so yeah, I always have yeah. wired plugged in most of the time. Controller, I run yeah. wired right here. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. like I <laughs> do that. I'm like batteries drive me nuts. Um, but no, this one's only down. yeah, this one's only thirty eight <laughs> thirty eight US you dollars. Get that shit out of me. It's got trigger locks and um, like programmable back buttons, and it's real cheap. And you'll like it, so it comes in red, blue, white, purple. I got the uh, I got the red elite. Oh, mm. I'm running. I want it. <laughs> I'm running. The comes in red and blue, green. but obviously I'm going to get the red. I, I want the red. Yeah. Yeah, Probably but these the ones come with background. like this paint splash one, and it comes with a. There's also a sparkly one that looks like a galaxy. I want it. They're all. I think they did. They did a wonder tiny T to Wonderlands one too, didn't they? The Power yeah, A they control. It looks yeah. really good. I don't know if I ever purchased nice. that or not. Yeah, you actually Google it. The cords, um, this US, like, uh, Type-C USB, so you can unplug them and put them on display if you wanted to. Mm. Yeah, they're called they're the Power A anything. Advantage wired controller. They look spicy, but that was the only other thing I would want to mention. And they're real cheap. And they have triggers, so trigger lock and stuff, so it's just pretty rare for a cheap wired yeah. controller. Power A came out of nowhere, and they were that, you know, third-party freaking hardware company where you're like no nah, i don't want that i don't trust their third party and that but they've really shot up recently they're even at pax last year they're like a whole yeah. display of their power a controllers oh i want to go look this sparkling one looks sick like i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it uh, does anyone have any other news in the gaming world there was a bit of pax news today oh With yeah bethesda cool. and nintendo have been confirmed as returning, yeah. Ooh. Are you yep. apparently having a Mario Kart Eight competition. There is, there is a Mario yep. Kart Ooh. tournament competition thingy, Bob, happening. I think. Oh, that... get us up on that, subby. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, start. I did post up the article today, but yeah, there are some more announcements coming, which I'm I talking about right now. Tournament. But um, there are a oh, few yeah, more. That was, sick. that was 2019. I was there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, should hopefully see hopefully some more publishers. Confirm soon. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's so, I mean, that's what I was saying last year. I'm like, I guarantee you this year's going to be bigger and better. They, they've realized that they can come back now. We're going to see a lot more bigger companies there. Xbox and PlayStation come back this year. Yeah. I reckon, I feel like Xbox might. Yeah, if Bethesda's there, hmm. that would be nice. Subby's smiling. Subby's, oh. well, Subby's actually real stone faced because he's, he knows stuff. <laughs> I don't know anything. Yeah, sure. Uh, any other news? I've got uh, We had Pixel um, Expo in Perth this oh, weekend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was, that was good. A lot of, lot of indie games coming out from, from, from the Perth scene, so look out for that those. Was a, that was a debut convention, wasn't it? Was yeah, the second one. It was the second oh, one. Second. Okay. Yeah. They want to start cool. setting okay. it up every year. It's going to be basically going to be the, the packs of Perth. Yeah, get get Tekken Ice and Media Passes, Subby. <laughs> I, literally, <laughs> literally, they, they need to... Do something with their 
promoting then because I had never heard of anything about it at all. <laughs> yeah, I only, I only heard of it like, it was the last thing. heard I nothing. <laughs> so I can't organize your passes if I don't know it exists. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. it exists. They're cheap. It's only $30. <laughs> You $30. need to uh, tell us next time. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know. Somebody just has to flick an email and. No. no, no. Bang. Yeah. Take a camera. Yeah, you got a camera? Is. I don't have a camera. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a camera around. I'll start vlogging. <laughs> <laughs> take your webcam then. <laughs> oh, I was talking about freaking phones are pretty good these days. <laughs> Dude, that's all you need, man. Yeah. yeah. A lot of the photos I do take on the run and upload when I go is just off my phone. Hmm. Obviously, if you have a proper camera, people are going to be like, "Oh, yeah, I'll happily take a photo with you." Yeah, it looks phone, more professional with a camera, yeah. but you you don't need it. Yeah, yeah. Well, people are going to prefer you to have a camera. Yeah, They're going to be like, oh, just, "Okay, you're just looks going to end up somewhere." Yeah, not just in your <laughs> in your random folder on your phone somewhere. This is for my personal collection. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want to see his personal collection. Yeah. So anyway, next time. Heads up that it exists. <laughs> right, well, yeah. What else? You post all the news. What else has been happening? Uh, you know what? It's actually days. it's actually been it's actually been really quiet in the news front. Um, the PAX was one of the bigger things recent, just in the last day or so. It just hasn't really been too much oh. going on. Elden Ring's DLC got leaked today. Oh, all right, go. Yeah, Shadows of the Earth Tree. Uh, so apparently they might be bringing it back cut content that was in the, the first line of production. There may be some new game mode coming out. It's called Rush the Boss. Um, oh, that's cool. And FromSoft <laughs> are looking to incorporate basically like community made mods, but officially into the game. Oh, yeah. Kind of that's like what awesome. um, how the Bethesda's done it with like Skyrim and Fallout. Oh, yeah. Like a mod yeah. screen. Section. Yeah, but. Um, yeah, you just be able to. They'll be coming in, 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 as, as like patches and yeah. Uh, but cool. we also have a expected release window, which is end of the year, so maybe November, December. Pretty keen for that. Yeah, oh, that's maybe pretty cool. Stace needs to still get around to finishing Elden Ring. Oh, bro, do you know what? I just had like <laughs> post traumatic stress flashbacks of like dung beetles. I killed a dung beetle. <laughs> I, I'm gonna rush a dung beetle. That's like all I can do. While Red and I are fighting a dragon. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're full on fighting this ice dragon, and I'm running around in the background of their clip trying to kill a dung beetle elusively. Um, I think Camby brought up that X Defiance coming soon. Is mm. it you or Tech? Well, someone brought it up. Camby. I, I think they're going for end of month. Around right. about end of month. Fingers crossed. Oh, bro, I can't wait to drop everything just to play that. Oh, that is like honestly. the funnest shoot I've played in mm. ages. It's, it's not this month. It's not. August month. Wow. <laughs> Bubble burst. Oh. They, said, they said summer. And then after this month, it's no yeah. longer summer. Not yet. Damn it. <clears throat> what did you say? You said something tech. You were hoping they would just rock Soon, no. Soon. Oh, yeah. Just not yet. I was just hoping it would just be like a surprise drop. They're like, hey, here you go. Yeah, well, it's like, here. Like back in the day when Apex Legends first came out. It was just like, oh, it's yeah. available right now, by the way. <laughs> So it's currently because it's the studio's first title. It's going to take a while to get it. Um, yeah, just do it every what's other the word? What's the terminology? Early access. Just release in patches. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like every other game. Yeah. Yeah. It's taken a little bit longer than it would normally because it's the first yeah, release yeah. from a new studio. Yeah. So I do love that they've uh, taken like community feedback as well. Hmm. They're trying to polish. Yeah, balance, it's nice that they're probably. giving them actually Ubisoft's giving them the time to finish the game. Yeah, because a lot of like publishers are like, no, hurry up, we need it now. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Ubisoft are actually norm- normally notorious for that, like pushing mm. stuff out. Maybe um, they weren't. Yeah, maybe, maybe the devs are pushing back, which would be nice. Yeah. I think um, the guys behind it are want to make sure it's um pretty good, ready, ready, ready to go. Passion, right? Pretty much, Pretty being good. all ex Call of Duty devs and players, they were. It's kind of their baby. One a while. Mm. It's got a few ex devs and ex pros as well. Ex pros, ex devs. It's I mean, so it fun. doesn't matter how much you fine tune a game; people will still find a way to break it. Oh yeah. Yeah, or we'll build metas. I mean, even when the beta was <laughs> on, they were changing that shit on the fly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
decided, decided to stop the leveling system because that's just going to get in the way and just let you enjoy the game with stuff unlocked. It was yeah, if stuff fun. wasn't working, mm. fuck it. We'll just unlock everything for you, enjoy the game. Because <laughs> I didn't... <laughs> I just want it right. I guess that's how you build a better game, right? Yeah. Hmm. It was so fun, so I can't wait. All right, so going with our theme of adding like a little bit of a personal touch to each podcast, I've asked everyone to come to the table with some of their favorite Easter eggs um, in games. Last week we talked about, um, what was our favorite, not last week, but anyway, last podcast we talked about our favorite tracks, right? Audio Sound tracks. Track. In, music, yeah. yeah, music in games. And we got a few responses in the um, comments. I can't remember Fark was, though. His was the one that stood out to me. I forget who he said. I'll have to look it up. Who's? Farquads. Farquads. Yeah. Was, he, was he in the podcast? No, he he chimed in in the comments. Uh. But I don't know. I'll get to you on that one. Um. Anyway, so what are some of our favorite Easter eggs in the game? This time I'll go around so we can all show our passion about it. But uh, let's start with Vibe because I'm sure yeah, Vibe's got He's got the highest game score in this chat. <laughs> he's played, he's played the most games, so he's done the It's just, it's just the overwhelming most amount that my brain's just like, oh, what Easter eggs have I experienced? Oh, but this is like, got the classics back on like San Andreas when you'd climb on top yeah. of the bridge. And it's like, there's no Easter egg here. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> <laughs> then you got like games like Borderlands are just full of riddled with Easter eggs, you know, references to other games and everything like that. Even a dungeon you can break through, and it's all like a Minecraft creeper in there and whatnot. That's that was a good fun. one. That oh, was yeah, a good one. Yeah. Yeah. In what? In Borderlands. Borderlands. It's like you bust through a wall, and there's a Minecraft creeper in there. Oh, that's kind of cute. <laughs> um, what other Easter eggs? It's too many to think of. Oh, you want me to come back to you? Yeah, come back to me. Subby, what about you? <laughs> Um, a lot of Mortal Kombat related Easter eggs, obviously, yep. with, the, with the hidden characters and all that stuff was pretty cool to witness back in the arcades. You guys wouldn't know too young. Yeah. <laughs> um, but look, ones that stand out is always the battlefield ones, always the ones that are mm. so, I don't know how anyone works them out. Convoluted. Oh, like the Megla, Megadon. all of the Megalodon, it, it, even just the other ones, like the dancing crab ones. Like I don't know how people figure this shit out. Because a I lot think, of them have like Morse code, and but it blows my flashes. mind. Yeah, count the count the light flashing and go to certain reckon, sections of the map. Pick up fucking CDs from the smallest of spots. Leaking by like sneaking into people's games and like, oh, what's this over here? Blah blah blah, acting like they don't know. <laughs> the crazy thing about the battlefield ones is you've got to try and do it. Without everyone else oh. in the map trying to do you it, you can only yeah. do it on a live server. So. Yep. That Megazord that... one, you need everyone in the water. You need yeah. practically the whole server in the water. And, um... Is that the is one where you had to like actually put dead kill people in the puddle? Is that one of them? Like, I don't remember. There's one where there's a puddle in the middle of the map, and I think you've got to. <laughs> Doesn't battle for one, the one you're talking about. Uh, yeah, I sure. think so. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like a crater full of water, and you. It's just a crater. And I'm pretty sure you got to kill people in it or something. I don't know. It's, but I don't know. Anyway, so the the megalodon ones stand out probably the most for me. Um, otherwise, Hitman. All the Hitman series have some pretty wild Easter eggs. Yeah. Any favorites? Um. Probably. I think, I don't know, it was a blood money. Which one had the one where you picked up a coin or something and all the people at the party would run over to you naked? Is that blood money? <laughs> it's so <laughs> it's random. Like you just find a random coin laying down somewhere on the ground and then all the, all the guys, just the guys, come over to you. Like, they're naked and they just start clapping around. They go back. <laughs> they're, just, they're just, anyway, there's a lot of them. But yeah, Hitman <laughs> and... Um, Hitman and Battlefield have got some pretty, pretty, pretty wild Easter eggs. The Battlefield ones, like, we tried to do one back on, like, Battlefield 4. And like I was saying before, if someone else is trying to do it too, it stuffs the whole thing up. There's still we people, there's still people finding Battlefield ones. I watched a video, a YouTube video the other day of someone shooting, like, steel plates on one of the maps, which give prompts to, like, create a, um staircase that goes up upwards or some something and that's just more that's very recent yeah so people Crazy. are still finding random stuff 
suppose with maps that with that scale, it would be hard to find everything. Yeah. Yeah. True. There's like what sixty? How many people were in a battlefield map? One hundred twenty-eight. Yeah, yeah. So I think in the newer ones. In is, the new yeah. one. Yeah. Mm. As long as you're not on the old chain, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. But uh, yeah, those those two games stand out for some pretty wild things. Yeah. Can be. Um, well, if you know me, then uh, you know I'm a big zombies fan. I love trying to complete the Easter eggs. I think a couple, or not, probably not a couple months, I think it was before I actually moved, I completed the Easter egg on... I think it was Cold War, Die Machine. Mm-hmm. And the amount of like meticulous things they put into them is is crazy. Like you were saying, like how they how people figure this stuff out. It's like you'd you'd think you'd never think of it. Yeah, like, it's just amazing. Oh yeah. People that live and breathe the like, game, right? Never get off. Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah, I've I've done all of them back on the on the on Black Ops Two. There was some amazing ones in like buried. Yeah, buried has some rad Easter eggs. A lot of COD ones too are like come with like awesome music as you're doing the Easter egg. Never forget oh, yeah. Ninja Toten one one five. Oh yeah. <laughs> Tech. But, uh, uh, I like uh, Dead Rising specifically the first one because I had a lot of references to Capcom games. I'm a huge Resident Evil fan. So the one that said like Jill sandwiches, I looked at it, I was like, ah, I know that one. Like, it's just kind of like. Paying homage to a favorite game of mine. Another one I found pretty funny was uh, if you've ever played Fallout 3 and you find off some like secret bunker and then you open the door and it just says, fuck you. And that's it. <laughs> that's the Easter egg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, keep going, Tech. Uh, I also liked the, the first one I ever found was the, I don't know if they're cavemen or monkeys in Halo 3 when you go off. On that level, when you go up some little little mountain, uh, you find like a family of them. Yeah, oh, that was <laughs> three, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. That was like the first one I ever found. I was like, I was like eight years old at the time. I'm like, ah, <laughs> 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 can I kill them? <laughs> Easter, egg, Easter eggs these days just aren't exciting. It's always the same shit. Like, yeah. it's always like an it reference. It's always like a Back oh, to the Future reference. It's always this just Skyrim references. Yeah, even Hunt Showdown has a DeLorean in one of the back sheds. Every game has a DeLorean oh. reference. Siege yeah. has one. There's only yeah. one game that I accept stupid and a whole lot of references, and that's Goat Simulator. Yeah. So that is taking the piss out of everything. <laughs> I love GTA's Easter eggs. Right. They do oh, yeah. Like Thelma and Louise, where you get that car driving off the um, yeah. mountaintop. Oh, Mount Chiliad. <laughs> Has anyone worked that out yet? I think so. No, that's think... one of the Easter eggs that no one's ever completely cracked, right? I think it was just a troll. Probably does like exist, a UFO, yeah. UFO type thing going on. The games like that and Red Dead have some pretty cool Oh, yeah, Easter even Red Dead 2 like, UFO like thing. hidden storylines that you... Yeah. Unless you do find the secret I Easter egg or something. I haven't found Gavin yet. <laughs> Gavin! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, okay. One more, I will admit, uh, is Red Dead Two. You you walk into like a shack, and it's like at some time of night, oh, there's the like UFO light on there. UFO, yeah, yeah, and there's like some referencing some cult that was actually real, and some guy convinced all these people to to unalive themselves. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole big thing. It's probably so many in that game that no one's found either. Yeah. Yeah, COD. Oh, well, going back to COD, one of my favorite ones is um, in on one of the Nuketown maps. I can't remember which COD it is. If you go around and shoot all the heads of the um, every single Nuketown map. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You go around and shoot all heads of the mannequins, and it brings up a yeah. You got two minutes. So easy with friends, but it's hard by yourself. Yeah. Um, and a little TV screen lights up. Yeah, that's Black Ops Two. Yeah, mm. and it's like Activision Atari games that you can yeah. play. Like I love mini That's games cool. in games. Yeah, and then like, Black Ops they Three, the they did the like simulate zombies. Yeah, there was one yeah. with the mm. Activision Atari games. There was one where there was zombies. There was one where they were don't look at them. They move towards you, and you turn around, they freeze. 
What was that? that goes, yeah. That, that actually goes with one of my Easter eggs because one of my favorite Easter eggs in a different game does the same thing. In The Witcher 3, yeah. Um, if you go into a church, there's all these yeah. angel statues. And if you turn yeah. your back to them, they start moving towards you. Yeah. And that's a massive mm. Doctor Who reference. That scared me, yeah. so, that scared me so much. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't notice until they were like right near me. I'm like, oh my God, they've been moving the whole time. But yeah, they, yeah, one of the Black Ops did that too. I think that was Black Ops 3. If you shot the heads, they became those angel things from Doctor so Who. Three or four? They changed it up. Sometimes it was the head, then one Black Ops, it was the arm, the left arm or the right arm or whatever it was. Oh, yeah. They yeah. changed it each time, so it was different. Hmm. Harder to find. Um, another one, I don't know, I, I guess it counts as an Easter egg. Um, one of my favourites, and we talk about it all the time on stream, but um, I love in Metal Gear Solid when you're fighting the end, but if you go in and adjust the calendar to like later on in time, he dies of old age waiting for you instead of having to fight him in the game. <laughs> when you load the game up, he's dead <laughs> because you fast-forwarded the clock. <laughs> And he's died of waiting. Snipe from a distance. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the one where if you shoot one of the bad bosses early on, you don't fight him later on. Yeah, like that. I'm pretty sure it's, it's the cool. same game. Yeah, yeah, because if like if you don't know Metal Gear Solid, he's a really old guy. That's but he's just really good at sniping, and you have to fight him in a field, and he like lies down. So if you pause the game, change the calendar, he dies of old age and load back into the game. I think, I think like things like that are really cool. That's wild. Yeah. Isn't there like another Metal Gear Easter egg too where you got to fight a boss and you've got to actually take the controller out of its um, port and put it into a different one? Yeah, and it also reads your um, game saves off your memory card and says it's deleting them. Is that two? Yeah. I'm not sure. I just, I just yeah. know about it. It might be two. Yeah, Red Graves knows all about this. Damn, he should have been here. <laughs> um, any other <laughs> Easter eggs? I can't think of many. Red Graves done a lot of the uh, yeah. Hitman stuff. A lot of the Hitman Easter eggs. In the more recent one, yeah. So much Easter eggs. I just like it when games reference other games. You just don't expect it. It was like yeah. one game I was just smashing through for achievements. All of a sudden, a character, a similar character from Final Fantasy X pops up. I'm like, oh my God, they've fully ripped this character out as a reference and a joke. And it's just hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, like it's a like, like Duke Duke when he finds the dead space guy as well as a dead space marine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that's Duke Duke. <laughs> oh, another Witcher 3 one. Oh, was it Witcher 3 or Witcher 2? You can find a dead assassin, like a dead Ezio. Oh, yeah, yeah, you do, yeah. It was, yeah, yeah, that's Witcher 3. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When they pull the piss out of other games, it is great. Yeah. <laughs> it's even like you could go even as far back as like Conquer's Bad Fur Day, where it oh, teases games like Medal of Honor and stuff. Yeah. The artwork was a Medal of Honor ripoff, wasn't it? For that? Oh, the box oh, like art. The box, there's a box art. There's a statue. I know there's a statue that's kind of Medal of Honor-ish that they did for Conquer. <laughs> yeah, it's off my head. I can't think of any more. There's so many, though. Oh, it's heaps. It's just overwhelming. <laughs> like, even, like, voice Easter eggs, like, in um Resident Evil 8. When doesn't he call Chris Redfield a boulder smashing? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a reference to Resident Evil Five. He, he also references OnlyFans. The way. Does he? <laughs> like, yeah, because he's like, luckily I'm your I'm your only fan. Oh wow! <laughs> Dear God. One e one Easter egg I remember is in some of the Halo games when the grunts would actually talk to you. I found that really funny. Talk to you or talk like to each other. They do, well, they talk to each other like. Did they, they kind of like swear phrases. and gibberish? And oh, stuff? There's, mm. there's one at the end of Halo Three where he's like yelling at you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Easter eggs make a game, I think, yeah. so much more better. Definitely, that's a great topic for someone to leave a comment down below on the YouTube video. It is definitely yeah. a great topic. Um, it makes you want to replay a game too. It does add a little bit of replayability, like when you hear on like, oh. There's this in the game, and you're like, I want to see it for myself. Yeah. You want to go back and do it yourself, see if it's real. Yeah. Even Siege do little ones. Like at Easter, you can run to the oh, log Siege. at the back of the Australian yeah. map and shoot it, and little bunnies. Siege, yeah. Bunnies Siege has a up. few. Extraction has a few. On the stadium map, if you jump off the edge and go through a, a drone hole that's randomly around the stadium, you can find like a large Tachunka statue. Is that still, is that still there, though? In this current... <laughs> it's still there. Okay. Yeah. 
That's yeah. cool. I'm gonna get. Yeah. I'm gonna make a game, and I'm just gonna have everyone from MKU's head in a little, little hidden area. Oh, like Doom! <laughs> Wasn't that a Doom Easter egg? Yeah. Old school. Well, the developers' heads. Yeah, I like. They did, they did that in Mortal Kombat in the pit. They put all of the oh, dev, really dev, dev, dev's rooms head are on the. Common. Oh yeah, developer room. Yeah, developer rooms. Yeah, the ultimate Easter egg. <laughs> Um, I think that's it, guys, for the podcast this week. Uh, I think this week we might plug True Apparel because the boys want to show their shirts off quickly. No, yeah, not me, but the boys. The boys too. are. <laughs> um, do we have a discount with code the, for True the, Apparel? The juice logo. What's up? What? Do we have a discount <laughs> code for True Apparel? Stop flexing uh, Yeah, MK, MKAU gets you. Yep. Um, it's kind of a little bit different now. It gets you ten percent off the jerseys. It gets you ten percent off the pro gear, I think, and five percent off everything else. Yeah. So it's a little bit different now. Yeah. Okay. So use the code. Our, use the code regardless, and you'll get a discount. They're our affiliate of the week, so if you want to check out some gear there, or even design some of your own stuff, hit them up. Um, they're good boys. They've been good to us. Um, yeah, that's it from everyone. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe, and stay tuned for the next episode. Bye. 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 Bye.